Jasper. Good Our afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the campus of Clarion University in the freshly the renovated Tippin Gymnasium for today's PSAC West doubleheader action between the homestand and Golden Eagles of Clarion University and your Cal U Vulcans. Colin Kirk, we're joining you today alongside me, Noah Mitchell, and Devin Harena. We're splitting it three ways here today, and it's going to be a fun one, guys. What do you think? Yeah, definitely excited for some PSAC West matchup to end out the season coming up on shortly. Yeah, see if Cal U can keep it going and get hot later on in the season, just start getting win streaks. Trying to get things continuing here. There's only three games left before we reach tournament time. It's hard to believe the season's gone so fast, but last time out, Noah, Cal U picked up a good win at home over Seton Hill to rebound from their loss on the road at Edinburgh. Yeah, definitely needed a rebound from a tough loss at Edinburgh. Uh, and rebounded in a strong way and beating them by Seton Hill by double digits, a team that was thought very highly of to start off the season, and, and that's just a good win to get things back on track. Even saw the shooting percentage start to creep higher up. We haven't seen that in a while. It's been very low the past couple of games, but well over 30% in that victory, and that's definitely a great way to get things started. But on the opposite end, Devin, Clarion just playing for pride here at this point, 4-22 and 22 on the season. They're eliminated from conference playoff contention they're on quite a losing streak here yeah about a five losing streak and the major thing is turnovers they average 15 turnovers a game and they only average 58 points per game as well so when you're scoring that low and you're giving up 70 points per game that's that's where you really struggle the scoring margin is negative 12 and and it's not in your favor so you got to be able to just hit hit shots and get Get, uh, get on defense, get back on defense, make sure you shut the other team down if you're going to only score 50-some points. No, the last time these two teams got together back in the month of January on the 29th, Cal, you came away with a 20-point win, 66-46. to Yeah, and you talk about um, the struggles that Clarion has had so far this year. I think the one positive side you have to look forward to going forward, something we talked about a little bit before we started our broadcast, is Clarion is not graduating anybody. No, no seniors on the team this year, so really um, being able to build some chemistry and, and get people playing on the right on the right pace and, and to get to um, put that put that mindset in, in the players' heads and develop this coaching staff is really something that they've been taking advantage of this year. Devin, it's quite a streak that Cal U is on beating Calarian. There's 17 in a row. Last time that the Golden Eagles got the better of Cal U was here in Calarian back in 2012. It was an overtime loss or win for the Golden Eagles, I should say. Yeah, and, and that's a 72 to 69, so it's going to be interesting to see if it shape, how it shapes up in this one. No, let's check out the starting lineups for both of these teams, starting with Clarion. Yeah, coming out of Clarion, we got Kiera Messiah, the guard uh, from Philadelphia, PA. We have number four, Neely Whitehead, um, the guard from Heritage, PA. Number 11, Celeste Ryman from Perrysville, Ohio. Number 22, Emily uh, Hed Hedges from Carnes City, PA, and then number 32, Yasmin Lewis from Baltimore, Maryland. A quick stoppage of play there as Cal is working on offense to get a foul. The call will be Celeste Ryman that's picking up foul number one. Foul first for her and first on the team. Devin, let's check out the starting five for your Cal U Vulcans today. And right now you have Bianca Jasper taking the ball out. 5'6", junior from Middletown, PA. Number five, Holly Harrington. 5'5", five, five, freshman from Felix Phillipsburg, PA. Number 20, Shauna Harrison. Guard 5'11", sophomore from uh, England. And Laurel, Lauren Bennett actually has been a real big factor in the last couple of games. 5'8", sophomore from Buchanan, West Virginia. And Brianna Allen, 5'7", sophomore from Pittsburgh, PA. Both of those last two names that I've just said have been putting a lot of work in on defense and been showing up late. Clarion getting the ball back off that turnover. Bennett put up a shot. Ended up being just a bit short. Hit off the rim and... Rolled its way on out of bounds. Golden Eagles working with the ball here, trying to find some space. Vulcan defense clamping down so far early. Eight to shoot for the Golden Eagles. Forced to throw one up there. Right off the front, nothing going for Whitehead. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can hear that, but California's bench getting involved a little bit there. Had 10 seconds left on the play clock, and, and the bench starts shouting out a 3-2-1, forced them to throw up a jump shot. Mind games being played here today. Jasper to the far side. Now straight up, Allen went up against two and got a good look. And that's just a great take. You fake the three. You've been playing a three. Uh, they were playing a, a hundred over here earlier. 
letting the opponent see that they can shoot the three, faking it and taking it in and trying to draw contact, but takes it through. Hedging this on the inside, missed her own shot, got it back. Another jump shot opportunity off the side, missed. O oh, rebound goes back to Clarion. Third chance coming up on the way, and they finally make Celeste good on it. It's Celeste Ryan. Yeah, and that's not something I expect to, to see happen too much more often. California giving up second chances on the offensive rebound, especially coming in with such a height, height and length advantage. Brought the coffin corner there and forced a timeout from Jess Straub, so Harrington will turn that one over. Race yeah. to the first timeout between these two. And Devin, you've got some papers in front of you here, and it'll give them a chance to talk about the tail of the tape between the two of these squads here today. Yeah, it definitely has to be the points per game. So you, you have 68 average for California and uh, 63 against a, they give up 63 points, and then you look at the other side, they give up 70 points, and they only score 58, so that's really going to be the name of the game today, and also the turnovers, like I said earlier, they average 15 a game, you cannot win games when you average 15 turnovers a game, and you, and you just got to be able to take care of the ball more, and be more disciplined, and just settle for good shots. And you know, with how California does such a great job at forcing turnovers and steals, I think that's something that you have to watch for even more. Um, that turnover margin can really get out of control. Saturday of very different matchups between two squads here. Cal U well on their way into the PSAC. Like I said, Clarion playing for pride here at this point in time. All six of the playoff spots have been claimed for the PSAC West. However, on the eastern side, there's still two up for grabs. And it's going to be an interesting one down the stretch. Almost any team, except for Mansfield, really has a chance to find their way into one of those last two conference berths. Got a couple featured matchups in the league as well as Atlantic Regional matchups. As it's now time to start paying attention to those, Harrington draws a double force to pass out of it. Of course, Cal U sitting at number eight in the current edition of the Atlantic Region rankings. Top eight get into the tournament. They're sitting in the right place, perhaps looking to move up a little bit higher. Lauren Bennett put a two in there, giving Cal U the lead back four to three. Ball knocked out of bounds. We'll stay on this side of the court here with Cal U. That's great help side defense from Brianna Allen there, recognizing that the post player has a little, a little or person or a little player guarding her, and it's really a mismatch down in the post. So she really comes back to the, knock the ball out of bounds from the held position. On the visiting side of the court, had me confused there for a second, and ended up staying with Clarion, I should say. Hedge just battling inside, and a foul called on the defensive effort. It should be sending. Edge it is to the Buzz line for two. Shauna Harrison. Harrison picking up foul number one. That'll be the first, first of the team as well. Hedge is coming and shooting 55.1% from the charity stripe this season. When it comes to Clarion, though, you said there's no seniors on this team, so that's got to be something you can really look forward to. This team's been together. They know what it takes. They can learn the ropes and now they can try to figure out how to win next year maybe make a push yeah look at look back at our Vulcans men's team last year only having uh, one senior on that team and, and look how they've rebounded this year with just having so much chemistry and, and knowing how to play with one another and gaining some experience Allen with the rebound kick back out for Harrington missed that shot chased down by Clary Whitehead on the run one of that far side now for Ryman Far side corner still. Hand off on the roll. Onto the inside. Had a good opportunity. Just couldn't finish it off there for Messiah. Yeah, just a great take from the basket, but Bennett right there sticking with her the whole time. Gets her lengthy hand up and Allen straight through the lane and the foul call does get a golden eagle end up on the floor. And, and all we hear awesome. from coaching staffs and, and players in this team is the strength of Brianna Allen and what she brings to the court there and her physicality uh, unmatched really for whoever she's guarding or matched up against. Two on the way for Brianna Allen off the foul. First one is good for Allen. And she comes in on the year, sitting at 75% on the dot from the strike. She really is versatile. She can shoot the three if she gets hot enough. She plays tough down low on the blocks as well. Real dual threat kind of player. Five to five. DJ Hahn made her way onto the court for Cal U. First time today. Subbed off Harrison. 
And it looks like Cowie's trying to go into a 3-2 zone here. Shot up in the corner. Bend around and flushed it through for right now. That's a great job to stay composed there when you know you got the trap coming towards you. Staying focused and finding that person that's open for a wide open jump shot. Jasper caught it right off the jump and puts it away. Bianca Jasper. Perfection there on that. All tied at eight apiece. A 6.05 left to go in the first quarter. And Bennett with a steal. Couldn't quite hold on to it and ends up with Allen. Allen on the inside, straight through the line. We'll call a travel on Brianna Allen, so ball back to Clary. Yeah, I think it was that first awkward step that they called her on it. And it, it might have not been, but the fact that it looked like an awkward step, that's why they just uh, took it and blew the whistle and called it. Hedgett is from Whitehead. Now back to Whitehead. Over to the corner. Long three opportunity. Bouncing off the side for Ryan. Fought for. Claimed by the Balkans. And now Jasper motors her way forward. Up off to Hahn. Steps inside for a long two rather than a three. Missed it. Odd choice. Yeah, you definitely want to be able to just shoot your shot. Plus Hahn gets really hot from three. So it's very interesting to see her actually step in on that shot. Hahn grabs the rebound off the miss and it ends up with Harrington. We believe we have a Harrington fan club section here today. She was talking with a few people in the stands before this game began today. Tend to shoot for Cal U now. It'll be Harrington throwing up a shot. Missed it. Oh, ends up right back with DJ Hawk. Hedge just couldn't corral the rebound. Now Jasper's got another chance. Straight up she goes and got it. I think DJ was a little bit yeah, caught off guard Jasper. there. The ball ended up right back in her hands and froze up for a second. 10 to 8. Cal, you in the lead here. 440 left to go in our first quarter. Thanks for joining us on CUTV Sports 1 on YouTube. CUTV, our cable channel, bringing you live coverage as always, as well as the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. So many options to tune in today. Had you just threw it outside. I think it should stay with Clarion, as I believe Cal, you had a hand on it. One set to come in for either side here. Yeah, Olivia Hudson checking in for the Vulcans. On the side for Clarion, it'll be number 23, Olivia Box, freshman from Foxburg, PA. Inbound goes for Whitehead, has five to shoot, needs something. Three, two, one. I don't think they realize the shot clock is so low, and they'll turn it over on the violation. And don't really understand why she turned and giving her coaches, like she didn't know what was going on. Got to be able to stay more focused into what's going on in the game. Need some awareness. Bounce speed on in for Jasper. Now they'll bring the double, having to pass out of it. Pesky strategy here, but they break it effectively. Harrington motor straight on through. Didn't get enough elevation on that one. Han came cruising in to punch that one away. Yeah, right there. That's a really questionable shot there. You had Hudson wide open on the side for an easy jump shot or even fake the jump shot and take it in. But she decided to try and draw the foul over the bigger defender. And didn't really end up working out, but the Vulcans... Really got to start heating up here because you don't want to let teams like this stick around. They did play tough the first time they got together this season. Clarion hung around for that first quarter, but eventually they had trouble down the stretch. Offensive foul called on Clarion. And that's just a great take by Han. He realizes that the post player is going to try and back her in and lower her shoulder and then maybe a little bit of a exaggeration there, but that's how you got to sell it. First quarter between these two the last time around. It was a 15 to 13 score line as Hudson jacks up a shot and missed it. Clarion hung tough. You know, and one thing that I really like um, seeing from this freshman class opposed to freshman classes in the past is their willingness to come in and, and shoot the ball. I mean, they're, they're coming in confident and whenever they feel like they have their shot, they're letting it fly. And eventually with time, they'll start to be knocked down on a higher clip. I gotta tell you, over the years, I've seen a lot of different strategies here, but seeing on uh, women's side as Hudson finishes off with a reverse style low up there. Seeing them opting to shoot first instead of trying for a low post presence. It's been something difficult to get used to as I've seen a lot of low post teams over the past couple of years. But i got to tell you, it's a breath of fresh air as Hedges puts that one in and has a chance for one more on the way. Basel 14, Olivia Hudson for Cal U. to come in here for a clarion. Cal U Hart, the sophomore from Albany. 
12 to 10. Cal U still holding the lead. Could be a one point deficit for Clarion off of this free throw. They missed it. Hudson grabs the board. Dribbled out here, Jasper. 3.05 left to go in this first quarter. Bianca pass over to DJ Hahn. She'll go for a three. Missed it to the right. Chased down by Harrington somehow. Pass over to Bennett and they can reset. Yeah, that's just great second effort by the Vulcans. Third effort even with Hudson getting the rebound. Back out for Lauren Bennett. Three-point shot is up. Missed it. Chased down once again. This is quite a series here. Jasper throws it up and draws the foul. You know, and they gave a couple of attempts from, from out in the mid-range beyond the three-point arc area. Uh, great great experience there by Bianca Jasper just to, to, to cut her losses and try to get herself an easy layup and to send herself to the free throw line. Bianca Jasper, the line Jasper an 82.9% shooter this season, makes that one. Makes it 13 to 10. Trying to extend it to a four-point lead. Two possessions here with this one. Missed it. 240 left to go here in our first quarter. Clarion on the attacking side. Looking for a lob down low. They got it to hedge this, and she hop skips her way through the defense and puts it away. Now here's Hudson on the break. Well defended. No one's blocked away. She got a bit confused there to continue to go in and just opted to slow up. Yeah, I'd just like to see her just take that one straight up instead of trying to use that pump fake. Worst thing is going to happen is you're going to get sent to the free throw line there for some free throws. Kick out to the corner. Clary moving the ball around well. All to the inside now, Messiah. Steps inside the yard, tend to shoot for Clary. Straight up attack, popped away, ended up in the hands of Harrington. Motors her way forward now, minute 15 left to go in the first quarter. Drove her way inside, that one is out of bounds and will stay with Cali U. Yeah, Harrington coming out really aggressive, taking it to the rack a lot so far in this one. So it's going to be interesting to see if she can start getting sent to the line and heating up. Back into the game is Celeste Ryman, number 11. Jasper looking for an inbound partner here. Still looking. Lobs up to Hudson. Was all alone. Now she gets the catch and shoot off the inbound. Missed it. Rebound for Ryman. Jasper went trucking onto the inside to steal that one and ends up getting a foul call. Not happy with that foul call awesome. at all there. See her with some, with some words for the referee. Uh, just just got to play better defense and try to get back and, and defend from there. Inbound goes, and it will be trotted on up by Ryman. The minute 36 left to go in our first quarter. Ryman feet onto the inside. Hedges is right on the elbow. Pass back out. Now a runner up on the way for Ryman. Can't get it. Rebound goes to Hahn. Now they'll stretch the court here. Harrington in a one-on-one. -on -one. Throws it up. Got it. One more on the way. Basket is good by Haley Harrington. And that's a great dead-eye pass from Jasper throwing Foster straight to Harrington zero. and like I said she's been going to the rack all day so far see if she Harrison can keep it up the Messiah's first foul on the day fourth on the team as Sitian and Nagantu checks in for the first time today off the bench for Lauren Bennett here's Harrington's chance popped out missed it 117 left to go and running. Clarion back on the offensive side of the court here. Rotating, looking for some kind of shot opportunity. Almost stolen there. Ryman able to collapse on top of that one and hold on. Now 10 to shoot for Clarion and they turn out one over. Tried to pass it down low into the blocks and ended up out of bounds. Again, the Vulcans are really conserving energy right now. Switching on every single, not even screen, just every single cut. They'll stay up with the person on top, and whoever's on top, they'll stay up with the people down low, and whoever's down low will just, they'll just switch on and off, switch on and off with um, guarding each other. So it's interesting to see how they just conserve the energy and see how it's going to implement on offense. Harrington with this one, just a step inside the three-point arc over to Nagantu in the corner, tossed up a shot and a travel call, and so back it goes to Clary. Yeah, it looked like she... Shuffled her feet twice there, just not really sure what she should have done or 
Um, Nagatu really does a good job being able to get her feet set on the catch. Maybe just wasn't ready for that pass to come in. I got to tell you, as much as I like this new facility here, not having doors over on that far side corner, that's three times now I've seen that basketball go rolling down the hallway. It might be a bit of a design flaw. Either way, they did a fantastic job here in this new Tippin Gymnasium. Wouldn't even recognize it from the last time we were here. What you can do at the half, go back and look at the last broadcast from when we were here just to see how different things are. Hudson with a steal now. 25 seconds left in the first quarter. Shot clock is off. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they hold it for the last shot here. Up top now, still trying to work their way inside. Pen to shoot. DJ Hogg goes for a three shot. Missed it. Harrington fights for this one and ends up back with Whitehead. Two, one. Run inside, tried to force in again. Don't think they realized how much time was left on the clock, and that brings us to the end of the first quarter here. Cal, you in the lead, 15 to 12. Stay tuned, second quarter of action coming up. You're watching Vulcans women's basketball right here on CUTV, CUTV Sports 1, and listening to it on the Vulcan Sports Radio Network as well. Back here on the campus of Clarion University, regional rankings are out. The first initial regional rankings of this season have finally been released earlier this week. They came out on Wednesday. Cal U finds themselves in the top eight, sitting in the eighth position at their current mark. IUP leading at this moment in time in the number one spot. Glenville State number two, of course, they hosted the tournament last year. Cal U beat them in overtime in the second round. Notre Dame of Ohio out of Noah's backyard, sitting at number three. Virginia Union at number four. Cal U went down there a few years ago, back in 2017, when they hosted the tournament. Gannon sitting at number five, a tough team for Cal U to match up against. We'll see them in the last game of the regular season in the finale at the Convo Center. Number six, Lincoln out of the CIAA, playing well for them, having a great season. Bowie State, number seven out of the CIAA as well. Two teams on the outside looking in in the 9 and 10 spot are Charleston and Shepard. Quite a mix of teams so far, guys. Yeah, and Shepard is not that far behind, so I would not be surprised if you could see a jump if they start heating up at these last three games. Charleston ended up picking a loss to Notre Dame back on Wednesday, so wouldn't be surprised to see Shepard jump their way up as that one's turned over. one of the games we are paying attention to in our featured matchups of the day and that will be for a later time. One set to come in here for Cal U at the next stoppage. Harrington with a steal. Break all the way alone. Straight up and in. 17 to 12. And very aggressive play style right now for Harrington and coming out here, getting steals all over the court, driving to the basket. That's what you like to see from a player like that. Falcon still looking for their first three-point Basket of the day went 0 of 6 in the first quarter. Hitchitus on the inside, straight up pass, and that's a tough one to miss right on the doorstep for Hart. Yeah, and that's a huge miss opportunity for Clarion. There's just a lot of miscommunication for the Vulcans there. Here's Nagaj with a contested two, missed that one. Taking some tough looks so far from the field, though. Only six of 22 they made in that first quarter. Yeah, you talked about the quarter free throw. I mean, a uh, field goal percentage from the three-point line, um, too. You got to look back at that Edinburgh, and you got to look back at that IUP game where they shot less than 30% um, in both of those games, and you got to do something to try to fix that. Clarion looking to inbound this one. 8.25 left before the halftime mark if you're just joining us. Went for a turnaround shot on the inside for Lewis. Didn't get anything and ends up corralled by Cal U. Almost lost it there. Now Hudson with this one. Back over for DJ Hahn now. Draws the cover of one and passes back out.
Drown Allen right on the elbow here. Pass out. 12 to shoot. Now 10 for Cal U. Runner thrown up by Hudson. No good. Yeah, right there. Using up so much time on the shot clock. You want to be able to get a slightly better shot than a fadeaway layup. Looking the same thing. They had 10 on the clock. There's a three-pointer so for Clary from Ryman. Ryan. Makes it 17 to 15. Cal U still holding that lead. Yeah, and Devin talked about it a little bit earlier. You don't want to let teams that should not be able to hang around with you stick around with you in a game because then you start playing down to their level and they're going to start taking advantage of that. There's a good shot for Cal U. Increasing their lead from Hudson, 20 to 15. But you're right, you don't want to let them hang around for too long. And they did a good job, did Cal U, in the last matchup. Like we said, it was only a two-point lead for them at the end of the first, but they held Clarion to five points in the second quarter the last time at the Convo set. So did a good job shutting it down there. We'll see if it's going to be a mirror image here today. There's another shot can for the Vulcans. <laughs> and you do not want this team to start heating up from three. That's the last thing you want if you're an opponent. It's at 23 to 15. 6.45 left to go before the halftime break. There's another steal. Hedges is trying to track it down. Ends up out of bounds. See Shauna Harrison re-enter the game for Cal U and DJ Hot. Clarion looking for an inbound partner here at 15 on the shot clock. Goes in for Whitehead. Whitehead over into the corner. Now Hedges on the dash with eight on the shot clock here. Tries to go straight inside. Another right on the yes, doorstep Lewis. opportunity for Lewis, and she makes good on it. And right there, one of the flaws for the Vulcans' defense so far is switching on every screen. I get it, you're conserving energy, but you switch to a lot of mismatches, and that's how they get the buckets, wide-open buckets. Foul on the floor after that possession. Foul number 22 for yeah, Blair yeah. and Emily Hedges. It looks like Hedges is all only just trying to box out down there, and I, mean, I didn't know there was such thing as one. too aggressive of a box out. Wouldn't that just be a thing if we saw <laughs> that get added to the repertoire so in the future? Right. I couldn't imagine. That would change the game. Well, that's the second one that has yeah. been called on her. My coach was always like, put him into the bleachers. Shauna Harrison all alone for a two. Oh, and that one just pops right out. That's unfortunate. Yeah, and she had she had some, some room, and the defender was not even aware at all that Shauna had the ball. You could have came in and put that one off the glass for a layup. Back the other way for Cal. You off another steal. Jasper motoring her way through off the glass. Thought we were going to see a pop out again, but makes good on that one. 25-17, our score with 5.40 left to go before the half. Over to the corner for Clarion now. Straight up onto the inside, threw it up, and foul shots coming up on the way for Megan Linden. And right there, Clarion is starting is starting to see that they are switching on the screens. So they purposely put Harrington, whoever's guarding Her or whoever Harrington is guarding, they do a screen and roll, and they try and post Harrington up every single time. And the result is either you throw it cross court like you just saw, or give it in the post and see how that works. First shot was no good. It'll be the second foul on Hallie Harrington, and first on the team here in this second quarter. Second free throw pops its way out again. Boy, it's something with these rims here today. We've seen it on both sides of the court. Yeah, both teams really struggling to be able to sink anything here from the field. And um, their best chances have been um, inside that paint. Harrington with the lob onto the inside for Hudson. Turnaround shot goes. Right over top of the matchup. 27 to 17, and just like that, it's a 10 point lead. Almost another steal for Cal U from Clarion. A couple players ended up on the ground. I do believe they called the jump. The arrow goes to Cal U. They'll bring us to our media timeout. We've got a chance. Let's check out some of the matchups around the league that we've got so far here today. A couple of interesting ones. Just like we said in the beginning of the broadcast, the eastern side, it's going to be interesting. A bunch of teams fighting for those last two spots. The following matchups, we've got Shippensburg at Bloomsburg. Of course, our matchup here today in Clarion. Shepard, a team that's looking for wins to move their way up in the Atlantic region rankings. They're hosting, rather traveling to East Stroudsburg. One o'clock for that one. Mercyhurst and Edinburgh will be keeping our eyes on that one. Lakers looking to get some wins here. 
and finish out their season with a strong, strong finish. Continuing down the ledger, we've got Kutztown at Mansfield, the Decker Gymnasium, IUP at Seton Hill at one, Lockhaven at Westchester, and the nightcap is Slippery Rock at Gannett. Yeah, a lot of good games so far, and you said the Lakers, they, they could make a run over Seton Hill just to finish. Both teams fighting down there for that sixth spot. Of course, IUP is number one, Gannett number two, how you in the third spot as of right now as they're both tied in conference that'll be moved down to fourth later as edinburgh did beat them in the season series fighting scott singh at number four upj clinched the five seed seaton hill and mercyhurst and slippery rock both duking it out for that sixth spot yeah mercyhurst and seaton hill both on losing streaks but slippery rock on the win streak and also has the night game so a little bit juices might be flowing for slippery rock in this this back end of the season Lakers are going at it tough so far. It's the second quarter in Edinburgh, and they've got themselves a seven-point lead over the Fighting Scots, 28-21. to 21. Back to our contest here. It's inside for Hudson. She's on the elbow. Steps back a few. Puts up a shot and missed it. Clarion got it back, and now they're pushing the tempo. Down long. Ends up out of bounds. We'll stay with the Golden Eagles. And great effort by Hudson just after you miss the shot, get straight back on defense and, and be able to block the fast break layup. Might be a trivia question here. Think about all the viewers listening and watching right now. Tweet us if you know how many golden mascots are in the PSAC. There's a couple now that I think about it. So if you know how many there are, give us a tweet at CUTV underscore PA if you want to show off your big brain knowledge. Any of you guys know how many there are? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. We've had the conversation before. I can remember. I don't want to spoil it. We'll hold on to that see if we get any tweets towards the second half. We'll talk about it again. Here's Clarion on the roll. 10 to shoot. They need something. Bumping off their own player there from Messiah. 4, 3. Onto the inside. Hudson ends up on the ground. They get another chance. They missed it. Rebound goes to Allen. Now here's Harrington cooking her way forward with this one. Yeah, great block by Hudson and just blown opportunity by Clarion. So the Vulcans really have to start capitalizing on these uh, missed opportunities from Clarion. 3.55 left before the half. It's a 27-17 lead for Calu. Allen's going to add two more. Floated her way inside on Brianna perfection there Allen. from the wow. And that strength being able to be showed off again by Brianna Allen to be able to hold off her defender. A great pass to get it over the shoulder and then finish him. Free put up for Clarion, missed it to the right. Harrington ends up with the ball. Now here's Bianca Jasper, and now it's Brianna Allen. Another two. That's a five-point mini run there Brianna for Brianna Allen. Allen. Yeah, right here, you could really put a team away. If you get on a huge run here, it could get really, really bad on that scoreboard. 31 to 17. End up with a jump ball. Arrow reads Clarion, so they'll get the possession. Ball Here's possession two on their way in for Cal U. It'll be number 11, Amaya Woodyard, and number two, Jameer Jeffries. Clarion set to inbound this one momentarily. Don't see too much sub work, surprisingly, from Clarion so far in this one. Really sticking with it. Bounce speed onto the inside. Blocked away clean by Jeffries. And that's great rotation on the help there. You saw the mismatch. She tries to play. She tries to front the post. They get it over her and try and dump it down in. And it gets sent into the crowd. Here's a sub for Clary. That's number 14, Emily Brown. Brown looking to inbound this one. Got the feedback from Whitehead. Now Brown almost lost the ball again. Quarter shoot for Clarion. Thrown on shot. Boy, that's a tough Celeste one for Ryan. For he continues three. to have a great game. I think Clarion just can't get back on the other side of the... I mean, celebrating the score and giving it right back up on the other side. 33-20, to 20 our score. Ryman's been leading the way for this Clarion offense. Rolling on her way to the inside, kicks back out. Uh, hung around with Brown up at the top of Ryman again, six to shoot. 
with the feet on the inside. Another block by Caillou. Ends up with Harrison as they save it from going out of bounds. Here's Allen trying to catch up to it. Almost took out the referee with that one. Back out. 2.05 left to go before the half. Here's Jeffries on the inside. Step back shot right from the elbow. Missed it. Had the right idea. Loose ball on the floor. Still loose again. The foul called as Allen went in to steal it. Yeah, a lot of uh, these fouls on the back on the in the back court is not really one of the greatest fouls to take. I've always been taught that's 50 feet away from the basket. You never want to foul that far away. So just got to be more disciplined on the reaching in. Allen picks up foul number one, and that's the second on the team here in the second quarter. 141 left to go before the half. They kick it back out. Ryman trying to chase it down before it goes out of bounds near midcourt. Whitehead with this one. Almost lost their dribble. Five, four, three, two, one. And threw it up. We'll call it travel before the shot. And, and you don't know how energizing those are when you can force um, what are close to shot clock violations there. And just great defense to be able to shuffle and stay in front of the um, the ball handler, Shauna Harrison, did a great job there. Jasper off the inbound. They bring the double, so Allen's going to have to carry things forward as DJ Hahn is back on for Cal U. Here's Woodyard on the attack. One on one, straight up missed it, gets her own shot back and had another opportunity, but it's stolen by Clary. Yeah, and right there, I don't know. You really want to try and drain the clock at, at the end. Just go into half with a high note and not let them try and come back like this. And then Linden with two for Clary and makes it 33 to 22. Under a minute left to go. Yeah, right here, if you're the Vulcans, you want a long possession that uh, opens up a huge shot. Jeffries with a lob onto the inside. Hahn in a one-on-one, -on -one, able to muscle her way through. Missed the first shot, second chance, got it. Great job of staying with it DJ after establishing Hahn. some great position down there and finding her own rebound and taking it back up pretty strong. Blended inside again. That one ended up out of bounds. DJ Hahn defending the whole way. 23.2 seconds left on the clock. Shot clock also says 23. So someone's going to have to take a shot here. Clarion gets the inbound. Cross-court pass there. Ends up with Ryman up top once again. Straight up inside. Went diving forward with that one. Wow. Yeah, right there. Crazy take. Uh, just basically put her head down and just went to the rack and threw it up. Was able to draw the foul. Diving through the gap there. I was real surprised she ended up getting a shot off. Yeah, Either way, Ryman stepping to the line. Now so has two Ryman on the way. Shoots 68.2% on the freebies. Missed the first one. Number two on the way for Ryman after missing the first. Missed that one as well. 12 seconds left to go and running. Vulcan's looking for the last shot going into the half. Three, two, a Woodyard shot right up near that buzzer. Oh, yeah. That'll bring us to the end of the first half. Calling you well in control so far, 37 to 22. Great, great half so far for the Vulcans. They just haven't been able to heat up from three. But in the post, they've been working and getting second chance, third chance points on offense. They just have to be able to put this team away. You don't. Like I said earlier, you don't want to keep one of these teams sticking with you when they're not supposed to be. Um, and just keep doing your game. No, what do you think Clarion's got to do to try to find their way back into this one? They were tough there for a little bit. Now starting to lose, and I would venture to say that these turnovers might have something to do with yeah, it. Yeah, definitely the turnovers are being a part of it. But also, I mean, you have to look at the number of missed layups that Clarion has had um, basically uncontested. And then whenever they do make a shot, uh, celebrating and, and not getting back and playing defense on the other side leads to quick points for the Vulcans to 
to uh, capitalize and answer with. And I think if you're if you're clearing, you got to keep on getting the ball into Ryman's hands. I mean, he's been one of the really more skillful players um, on the court, being able to create for others, and just got to find a way to finish now. We're going to go ahead and head to the halftime break here. We'll be back with more basketball action after the half is over. Cal, you in the lead, 37 to 22. Stay tuned here on CUTV, CUTV Sports One, and the Vulcan Sports Radio Network as well. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Inside the PSAC for week 15 of basketball action in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. And since it's week 15, that means there's only four games remaining in the regular season. But before we can look ahead, let's take a look back and see what happened this past weekend. And this week we're going to start on the women's side of the ledger. And you see the Saturday scores. Uh, Edinburgh with a home upset of California, 77-53. to uh, Westchester and Bloomsburg in a tight one, 56 55, Bloomsburg getting the win. Shippensburg continuing their dominance in the East, 72-64. Slippery Rock getting by Seton Hill, 64-63. Millersville, comfortable win over Mansfield. Kutztown, a seven-point win over Shepard. And then probably the highlight game of the weekend for the PSAC was IUP and Gannon. IUP holding on for a five-point win over the Golden Knights. And after those wins, let's take a look and see how those affect the standings in the PSAC West first. You can see still only three teams have clinched and no teams have clinched a, a position in the playoffs. IEP, Gannon, and Edinburgh all have clinched uh, with this past weekend's action. Cal U is very close to clinching. I believe they only need, with my math, one win. Uh, UPJ, Seton Hill, and Mercerus will be fighting for that sixth or fifth and sixth final spots in the PSAC postseason. Now let's take a look at the PSAC East standings. Four teams have clinched with Shippensburg, Shepard, East Stroudsburg, and Kutztown all holding uh, cards to the big dance or the small dance, the PSAC Conference Tournament in March. And then you see Bloomsburg and Lock Haven and Westchester all fighting for that last couple of spots in the PSAC East. Now let's take a look at some of the outstanding performances this past week on the women's side. First in the East, the Offensive Player of the Week, Lauren Lister from Millersville. She broke the all-time Millersville scoring record uh, with a 41-point output versus Shippensburg. And then the East, there's not a co-defensive player of the week, it's just the East Defensive Player of the Week, but Chrysho Gordy of Shippensburg, she had 10 rebounds, four, block, four blocks, three steals in a 2-0 week for the Raiders. Now let's take a look at the PSAC West Players of the Week. And a familiar name in the West Offensive Player of the Week category, Michaela Barnes for Edinburgh. She had 28 points versus Clarion and her seventh 30-point output of the year versus Cal U on Saturday, and then the West Player of the Week, Haley Twos of Gannon. She had four blocks, four steals, seven rebounds on a one-on-one -on -one week, and then it was co-defensive players of the week, as you can see, Maddie Shanahan from UPJ. She, had, she averaged 10 rebounds, two blocks in this past week. Now let's take a look at the schedule for this week. As we said, it's week 15. We're coming into the last two weeks of the regular season, and a lot of 530 games this Wednesday. Uh, a big one at IUP, Edinburgh at IUP. Uh, that'll be at 5.30. Seton Hill visits Cal U at the Convocation Center at 5.30. February 22nd, highlighted by Cal U at Clarion. Mercyhurst at Edinburgh. IUP at Seton Hill. Slippery Rock at Gannon. Lockhaven at Westchester. Shepard at East Stroudsburg. Kutztown at Mansfield. Chippensburg at Bloomsburg. And then UPJ and Millersville will be enjoying an off weekend. And to follow along with everything in the PSAC, make sure to log on to their website, www.psacsports.org, where they have all the information you could want on PSAC basketball. And if you want to follow along with Cal U basketball, you can watch live games on our YouTube channel, CUTV Sports 1. So make sure you smash and like the uh, subscribe button so you can be notified whenever any games are live. Uh, and also you can follow along with our Twitter page at CUTV underscore PA. You'll get crew pictures, live links, and more from the Greg here at CUTV. And if you want to listen to live games, if you're in the car or just happen to listen, like listening instead of watching, you can listen to our sister station, 91.9 FM, WCAL for all the live games. And then finally, make sure to check out our friends at Cal U Sports Information, www.calvulcans.com. Matt Kiefer and Alex King, his staff and their staff, do a great job of keeping everybody up to date. After the break, we're going to take a look at everything going on in the men's side of the PSAC. You're watching Inside the PSAC right here 
on CUTV. Sometimes we can do things that exclude others. You're still talking to your friends. It's complicated. I think he went back in. We gotta go get him. Welcome to Jumanji! Even the smallest words and actions can have a big effect on someone. You have the skills. Because of you, someone's entire day, their year, or their life can change. Remember, the future is in your hands. Visit becauseofyou.org to learn more. Totally! Let's do it! It's time to make the PSAC yours. More than 7,500 student athletes working to become champions in 23 championship sports at 18 universities, educating more than 118,000 students and supported by an alumni base of over 900,000. All in and all ready to make the PSAC yours. It's the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Consider the future, your future. At California University of Pennsylvania, you can build your life your way because we believe in you. We invest in you, empower you to create the future you envision. We give you the tools and teaching so you can rise up and achieve. Don't settle for someone else's vision of you. Build you at CalU. Visit us at calu.edu. Welcome back to Inside the PSAC, and like Rick, Arn, Tully, and Oli, there are only four games left in the PSAC, but before, once again, we can look forward, let's take a look back at what happened this past weekend in the PSAC on the men's side. Uh, Caillou taking the trip to Edinburgh and winning convincingly 93-67. Westchester in a close one, 100-97 over Bloomsburg. But if you look down, there is a huge upset uh, as... Lock Haven beat Shippensburg. It's not a tie, but Lock Haven got the win in double overtime uh, over Shippensburg in a big upset uh, for the Bald Eagles at Shippensburg. So everything's going to tighten up. Let's see how things shake out after this week's action in the PSAC West standings as all six seeds, all six so slots in the PSAC tournament are full. The only thing left to do now is seeding. As you can see, there are just asterisks and no numbers yet. But IEP, Pitt, Johnstown, Mercyhurst, Caillou, Gannon, and Slip Rock all will be in the PSAC tournament starting Monday, March 2nd. Now let's take a look at the East standings. Shippensburg is the only team clinched in the PSAC East, and they have clinched the number one seed, so they will be guaranteed at least one home game in the PSAC tournament, and they have a chance at hosting as the men's tournament will be held in the eastern side this year. But you see East Stroudsburg, Westchester, Millersville, Lockhaven, Shepherd and Kutztown all fighting, and even Bloomsburg and Mansfield still have a fighter's or a puncher's chance at getting into those top six. Now let's see what route those teams have to take to navigate to get, but first, let's take a look at the PSAC players of the week. First on the east side, on the men's side, Heath Robbie of Westchester went absolutely bananas, had 50 points and a win over Bloomsburg and 28 points versus Ship, and that is a quick 78 points in the stat column for Heath Robbie of Westchester. And the East Defensive Player of the Week, Christian Kelly, Lockhaven. Five blocks, eight rebounds, and the upset of ship. And a lot is lost in that as he had a key block and a key basket in overtime to preserve the win against Shippensburg at Shippensburg. Now let's take a look at the PSAC West Players of the Week and a few familiar names. Micah Till uh, rounding into shape as he had to take the entire fall off. He was a uh, had only one semester of eligibility left, so he's playing in the spring. So rounding into shape, he had averaged 21.5 points this week, 9.0 rebounds in a 2-0 week for the Rock, who clinched the PSAC playoff berth. And on the West Defense Player of the Week, Armani Foster of IEP had four steals, four blocks, and four rebounds in a 2-0 week, but he did a great job um, in two tight games against Kyle and Gannon. 
Now let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for the PSAC. And once again, uh, astute viewers will know it is the exact same schedule as the women, just with times changed. But a couple big games um, on the ledgers. You look out east is uh, Westchester, Kutztown, Millersville, Shepherd, um, and then you have West uh, Bloomsburg at Lock Haven. So all those teams fighting for PSAC playoff berths. And then let's take a look at Saturday's action on February 22nd. A lot of games at 3 o'clock. There is one 7.30 game, and that is the game from downtown Erie, PA, Slip Rock, Ed Gannon. But Cal, you makes the trip up to Clarion. Mercyhurst, a short trip to Edinburgh and IP at Seton Hill. So really not a lot of marquee games in the West since everything is uh, settled for the most part, just uh, seeding to remain. But in the East, you have Lock Haven at Westchester. That's a huge game. Shepherd at East Stroudsburg, that's a big game. And then Shippensburg at Bloomsburg. So a lot to play for in the PSAC uh, as we head into the madness that is March. But once again, make sure to check out everything PSAC related on their website, www.psacsports.org for players of the week standings, up to the minute scores, and everything you could want. And for CU TV, make sure to watch our games live on CU TV Sports 1. And also, something we're proud to announce, the games will also be live on our cable channels in Atlantic Broadband, Channel 17, and Armstrong uh, cable channel so make sure to watch that and also CU TV Sports 1 like and smash the subscribe button so you can be notified when everything is live and if you don't like uh, following along that way follow along our Twitter page where we'll have pictures of the crew and links and everything fun pertaining to be part of the family here at CU TV if you want to listen to the games those games will also be live on our sister station 91.9 FM WCAL so listen and if you can't listen on terrestrial radio of course there's an app for that so go to the WCAL Facebook page and find out how to become a uh, listen on the phone car and all that fun stuff. And once again, if that is not enough for you and you want to see what is really in depth with the Cal U Athletic Department, follow along uh, the website and go to the website www.calvulcans.com where Matt Kiefer, Alex King, and their staff do a tremendous job with everything Cal Athletics. That's it for this week on Inside the PSAC. We'll be back to action after these breaks for the second half of action before California and Seton Hill. Have you seen the new Cal U Vulcan logo around? Have you wondered where to get gear featuring it? Then go to calvulcans.com and click shop. Log on and browse a full selection of men's shirts, women's shirts, pullovers, hoodies, and more. All items feature customization with the new Cal U Vulcan logo and wordmark. The site also features a full selection of hats, tailgating items, and accessories. Don't be the last person to sport new Cal U Vulcan gear. Go to calvulcans.com today. Pride and passion drives the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. From 55 NCAA championship teams, 294 individual national champs, and counting. Who's next? Make the PSAC yours. PSAC Proud is winning in athletics and in the classroom. Over 3,100 PSAC student athletes are honored as scholar athletes. It's a perfect mix of athletics and academics. It's time to make the PSAC yours. Welcome back here to Clarion University. Colin Kirkwood, Devin Herena, and Noah Mitchell joining you here. Vulcan's in control, 37 to 22. Noah, let's start off with you. Let's check out some of the notable stats that Cal U brings at the half. Yeah, I think the big one that you have to look at, and we talked about it before the game started, has to be that turnover stat. Uh, California only with four turnovers so far versus Clarion's 11. Um, definitely not something that they're going to be able to, to continue if they want a chance to win this game. And Devin, let's see what some of the things that Clarion's doing right on their halftime stat sheet. Uh, the second chance points, Clarion has really been capitalizing off of that. They have, they have eight second chance points, one more than Cal. So just being able to get to the ball, track down the ball, and put it straight back up is what Clarion is doing good, and that's how they're kind of sticking around this one. Still hanging around. They kept it tough for the first two quarters. Let's see if they can keep it up. And don't forget, after the conclusion of action here, you can stick around for the men's portion of the doubleheader. Cal U looking to gain as many wins as they can heading into the PSAC tournament, trying to creep their way into the men's Atlantic region rankings. Not ranked as of right now, but perhaps that can change next week. Be some quality wins. And starting off with Clarion will be a good way to get rolling as we had a foul called on the floor. Right there, great box out by Brianna Allen, just forcing her defender to 
try and swim around her, but ends up just pulling her. And that's what they call, a, I believe, the loose, bow, the loose ball foul. Team foul number one. Kiara Messiah gets foul number one on the team and the second on herself. Runner floating in and good for Harrington to get things started in this second half. Harrington playing really aggressive, continuing from her her great offensive performance there in that first half, getting herself involved in, in the inside and coming up with an easy floater. Here's Lauren Bennett off the break, and ends up getting kicked off the foot there of Hedges. Yeah, right there, tried to squeeze it in. Could see what she was looking at. Tried to squeeze it in a little bit too tight of a space. Jasper looking for an inbound partner. Floats in. Here's Shauna Harrison. Went strong off the glass but missed it. Punch party going on to see who's going to come up with that ball and it'll stay with Cal U. For some space. Ends up with Shauna Harrison. Backdoor going in for Jasper. Good cut. Good Bianca install. Jasper. There's some good awareness there to look baseline to, to find Bianca Jasper cutting there and, and Bianca doing a good job of finishing it off. 41 to 22. One set to come in for Clarion here at the next stoppage. What to throw on the inside. Now they go for Ryman off the roll, and there's another turnover. Going long, Jasper in a one on one right underneath the basket, running out of space. Kick back out. Opportunity for Shauna Harrison. Missed that one. Still sticking with Cal U, though. And now the second chance points are coming for Cal if they can put some of these in. Ryman on the carry. And on the rotation. They continue to hand off. Now they go for the lob to hedge this on the inside. They turn it over again. Just great help defense by Harrington and putting her hand right on the ball, making sure she doesn't make any contact with the offensive player. Harrington up top. Now pass over to that far side. Lob onto the inside for Allen in a one-on-one. -on -one. Missed it. The foul call. And there's that toughness and physicality awesome. that Noah was talking about earlier. Really backs down her defender. Is able to throw it over the top since Clarion is really doing a great job with fronting the post. It's just about trying to get it over the head of the defender. And right there just couldn't finish. And then ends up getting the foul called on her. You know, that's really the problem with fronting the post when you have no backside help defense to rotate over and try to take that pass away. Um, you're leaving yourself at a huge disadvantage because once it gets over once it gets over your head, there's nobody else there to defend. That was Allen's second foul and first on Cal U in the third with 7.28 left to go. Banks are closed here as Clarion trying to get one off the backboard. Now Cal U in transition. Run on the elbow, Jasper will pull up for a jumper, missed it wide right, almost there to clean it up there is Harrison, but she missed that one as well. Kick back out, Lauren Bennett, long shot. Another miss. And right here, getting a little bit sloppy for the Vulcans, can't make the layups, but just got to be able to use the backboard, hit that white square, that's what it's there for. You got to be able to um, use all the given circumstances. Playing with a one-on-one. -on -one. Shot thrown up there by Messiah and a foul call. I believe she'll be shooting two on the way. She will step to the line. Shauna Harrison with the foul. Be the second on the team and first on her. And the Vulcans still struggling from three as they have yet to hit one. They've missed, I believe, three in the last two possessions. Two by Shauna Harrison and one by Bennett. Just can't get it to fall yet. Messiah got the first, second one on the way. And both are good for the 61% shooter. There's a steal just about for Clarion, but can't catch a break as Hedges had a foot on that line. Yeah, I thought he wasn't going to blow the whistle. She actually hit it and it bounced out of bounds, and she grabbed it real quick. I thought he didn't see that it bounced out of bounds. On the break. Three on two the other way. On alone, finished off. That's a great job of breaking that press DJ there. Uh, just moving the ball really quickly on the inbound, knowing that's where they're all going to try to crash to, and just racing up court for a, for a nice pass into a layup. Yeah. 
Now a handoff. Stolen away again by Calhoun. These steal numbers are going to be large at the end of this one, to say the least. Now Harrington goes for a three. Straight through. Haley Harrington. Harrington really feeling herself right now. The drop down help is there. 90% of the time so far in this game, she has come up with steal after steal after steal, and now is capitalizing off of them. For a three for Clarion, no dice on that one. Now one on two the other way. Lauren Bennett catches up for Cal U, but they'll pump the brakes. Rather, they'll catch and shoot here for Harrington again. Almost had a rebound there for Jasper, but lost it. Yeah, it was just a little heat check. See if she still had it. Now over to the corner, they work it around. Another three-point opportunity for the Golden Eagles. Missed it. Ball rolls out of bounds. We'll stay on this side of the court here. And personally, I'm not a fan of the one hand, the one hand pass when you wrap try and wrap around the defender. I'm more of the, you go up with both hands and try and jump and pass. But a lot of the times it works for Jasper, but right there it didn't. And fortunately was able to get the ball back. Feet onto the inside, missed it. Hudson was a check-in for Cal U at that stoppage. Cal U's taken 50 shots so far in this game and have only made 18. There's a shot for Clarion off the back. Rebound for Hedges back outside for another opportunity. It's definitely a shooter shoot mentality in this game right now. We know they're doing everything they can. They're trying to shoot themselves back into this one. Eight to shoot. Yeah, you've kind of seen that same situation going on in Edinburgh and um, in the convocation center against IUP. Just not able to get anything to fall. Here's Harrison off the break. Two more. Found herself in a good place. Yeah, and that, that's where they've been best at um, when they can get into that driving lane, into that, that painted area. That's where they've been shooting at the highest percentage, even when they're open from three-point range. 48 to 24. Cal U starting to run away with this one. With 424 left to go in the third quarter. We still have a whole quarter left to play. And tack on another steal. And a thing I've really been noticing for the Vulcans, when they front the post, say Hudson fronts the post, she will call out, oh, I'm fronting the post, somebody get behind, somebody get behind. And that's when Harrington really gets behind and tries to sneak in and smack the ball out the, the player's hand. Ten steals on the ledger so far for Cal U. Fourteen turnovers for Clary. There's a runner, missed it, second chance, can't get it. And the missed layups are really crucial for Clary, and that's about 12 points you left on the board so far in this game off of just missed layups. Here's Han on the inside, right on that free throw line. Goes for a step back to create some space. Missed it to the left. One set to come in for either team at the next stoppage. Straight up top. Hedges on the attack. Right around her matchup and gets tough to test the two to fall. That should bring us to a media timeout. Now we've got a chance we can talk about some of the team leaders Time of out. both of these two teams, starting with Cal U. They've kind of been without one of their leaders for the decent amount of time here as Monica Burns still not back yet for the Vulcans. She was leading for quite some time, Devin. Yeah, Burns would literally pull up from virtually anywhere on the court. Uh, you had to, that was taking an extra defender out of any situation. So just a sad thing to see her not be able to play in the rest of this season so far. But Holly Harrington has 12 points right now leading the Vulcans. So it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out. And then you look at Harrison, Shauna Harrison with the rebounds. We've seen it a lot today. A lot of second chance shots. Even some might have been missed just to get the own rebound again and put it back up and assist Jasper. Really has perfected almost the wraparound throw, even though I'm not a fan of it. I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad pass, but it, it is there most of the time. And she also leads the league in steals and minutes per game. And you see a lot of Jasper on there as well, but Noah, just talking about Calarian. At this point, you really said everybody's starting to learn the ropes here. No one's leaving. So you can see some of their leaders on your screen. Actually, haven't seen, I believe, Yinda Bobo actually had an injury 
after the first time they got together because she has not played today. And I do believe I've seen her in warm-ups on the bench, so her season should be done. But other than that, kind of split around. There's Messiah. See a little bit of Smith as well. Yeah, and I talked about it a little bit earlier. I think Ryman might be one of the, the brighter spots on this team. Only standing in at 5'3", I think, is her, her big disadvantage. But she's really quick and, and has been one of the players on the court that's done the best with being able to take care of the basketball. Back to action. Turnaround shot. Jeffries contested. Gets her own miss. Lost that one, and it goes back to Clary. Yeah, right there, Jeffries really struggling with regathering the ball there. You don't want to dribble a loose ball. You want to be able to pick it up and make sure you have it. Back to around the league here. We'll check in on Edinburgh and Mercyhurst and see what's going on with the Lakers and the Fighting Scots. Lakers playing tough, 42 to 34. They've got themselves a lead over the Fighting Scots. And no, on Wednesday, Edinburgh really had themselves a challenge. They went to IUP, ended up dropping it in double overtime. But it was something. Yeah, and um, that's really really shocking to see them losing to Mercyhurst. I mean, we see Mercyhurst come into the Convocation Center and beat the Vulcans, but not a game that you would think they would drop um, after just beating the Vulcans, going in double double overtime against IUP, and, and now trailing. Mercy here is by eight. You think about this, if they somehow managed to find themselves a win here today, they'll be off a fresh streak there, and Cal U has to go to their place on Wednesday. It's going to be tough. Yeah, and then that'll secure, not secure, but open back up that number three spot for the Vulcans to take um, control of it in the PSAC West. Tough one to say the least. One regional game going on right now, Lincoln at Bowie State. Bulldogs. So far in that first quarter, it's 6-3. to three. They've got the lead, about five minutes left to go. That one just got started. Of course, Bowie State sitting at number seven in the rankings, Lincoln at number six. Yeah, we definitely could see a lot of shakeup in the standings after today. Back to action here for Clarion. Got themselves an offensive possession. See if they can secure the ball, but just like that, they turn it over again. Yeah, I wouldn't bank on it, Colin. I'd agree with you on that one. It's been tough sledding so far for them, to say the least. 2.35 left in our third quarter. Still one more whole quarter left to go. Straight up to those Hudson and one more on the way. Showing off the muscles. Yeah, it's a great take there off the dribble. Has the first step on her defender. Takes it straight to the basket. And ends up finishing with the contact. The Messiah picking up the foul. It's number three. As Hudson's and one is good. That's the fourth on Clarion as well. 51 to 26. And you also love to see the conversions on the foul, the free throws. That's been high so far. Four of six. Can't ask for much more. Play with stop there, and we'll get it back 14, with these Hudson. free throws coming as Hudson picks up a foul. It'll be the second on her and third on the team. We'll send Messiah for the first chances on the day, and she got that one. And like you guys said earlier, this Clarion team is young, and I've seen earlier in warm-ups, they really have a good vibe to them they, they're they were fun. excited yeah they're fun and it's going to be interesting to see how they pan out in the next couple of years it's all about a learning experience at this point in time if you can go out there and play loose have fun with your teammates you form those bonds and those will really help you down the stretch later on in seasons to come And Clarion right now, you see not a lot of things going right for them, but you don't see them yelling at each other. You don't see them putting their heads down. They're still going to the basket and driving hard. Just like that, they're rewarded. 51 to 29. Still have some work to do. 133 left to go in the third quarter. Harrington over onto the far side now. Far side corner for Hudson's three. Got it. And that's the, if she can be able to hit that three-point shot at a more consistent rate, uh, I think the sky is, I mean, the, the sky is really the limit for her. 
She's still got plenty of time to grow. Only her first year at the program. Here onto the inside. Now they go back out. It'll be a long shot. That one straight through. Whitehead. Whitehead. And even though that's a great shot, it's great defense by the ball because you hear a lot of communication. On the inside, well, for Clary. And Bobble there almost took out Cole Miller right on that baseline. Looks like Jadis Gameless will make her first appearance of the day. with 43.3 seconds left in this third quarter. Speeding forward is Harrington carrying this one. And Galas over to Hudson. She'll shoot another three-point opportunity. Too strong off the back. I'm going to say he check just to make sure that if she had the, the hot hand. That one is hit completely off the bottom of the backboard there by Messiah. Back to Cal U with 17 seconds left. Shot clock's off, so this could be the last possession of the third. Yeah, right here they just set the play up and try and get some a great shot out of it. Four, three, two, one. Thrown up but contested by Harrington. That'll bring us to the end of the third quarter. And Cal U holding on to that lead, 54 to 32. Fourth quarter of action coming up after the break. Stay tuned on CU TV, CU TV Sports One and the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. Word. I'm the awkward silence. You try to avoid me, then there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Kelly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Welcome back. This is the regional rankings on your screen once again. A couple teams are in action so far. Of course, IUP there taking on Seton Hill. Let's take a quick check in and see how that one's going. Actually, we're going to hold off on that. We'll check out that one a little bit later. I have to go searching for the link because it's not on the PSAC list. So I'm going to have to do it the old fashioned way. Yeah, and right now I'm over here vibing. They got Kane Brown playing in here, my guy. Love it. That was having fun here. over here, too. We're having lots of fun today. We still have a whole nother game left. It's a nice day out, too. The sun's yeah, out. It's sunny. It's a little chilly, but not the worst thing in the world. Now we're back to action. Crimson Hawks and the Griffins from Greensburg. Minute left in the third quarter. IUP 46. Seton Hill 31. After another miss, here comes Cal U. Hudson with this one. Onto the far side. Draws a double. Has to pass her way out of it. Jasper to the inside. Back out they go. Another three-point opportunity for Harrington. Missed it off the back. Trying to chase down her own shot. and Wow. Able to hold it. Now Galas with a three. Missed that one. Clarion back with it. Hedger just couldn't control it. Just threw an absolute missile into her teammate that was about two feet away from her. Yeah, the real strength of the pass is it's kind of been <laughs> off so far, to say the least, now that you say that. You see some scenarios that might want to go for a touch pass, and they've seen some bullets thrown yeah. in there, and then flip the script when you need the opposite. Seven to shoot for the Vulcans now. Fadeaway shot goes for Harrington. Haley Harrington. I like the little hop step there that she had with the little fadeaway. Great shot. Tough one, but it ended up going in for her. 56 to 32. Clarion fires up a shot. They miss it. Rebound goes to Bianca Jasper. And they've got the numbers the other way. Oh 
Here's Jeffries with it back out for Hudson. Fires long, rimmed, and rattled out. Everyone takes a dive. Yeah, the way the Vulcans use the high post player is a oh, huge advantage to their offense edges. and the way they want to run things. Because you pass it into the post, the high post, off the in the front on the top of the key, dude, the she she runs straight off of him, tries to cut to the basket, and is wide open. Or you get a wide open three. Brianna Allen is back onto the court for Cal U. Also number twenty three, Olivia Books for the Golden Eagles. Another foul for Clary, and they'll re-inbound this one. It's the second foul, and it was Box with it. Fought for and ends up out of bounds again. There goes the ball. Finally got it back out of that hallway. I want to close the doors. <laughs> At least there's doors on that side. Yeah, this side doesn't have any doors, and we've seen it take a lot longer trips down there. Seven whole minutes left of basketball here in the fourth quarter. Cal, you looking to close it out? Hedges just went with a full head of steam onto the inside. And that is all stopped up as Allen should be picking Allen up a foul here. Allen for Brianna Allen for Cal U. That's her third. It'll be the third for she Brianna Allen and one. first on the team. Tossed onto the inside. Hart just straight up with that one. A six-footer throws it up and foul call. Tallest one on the team heading to the line. Boss number 14 for Cal U, Olivia Hudson. She's a 40% free throw Getting shooter. The line for Clarion, shooting two. He's got the first one. This can be a good way you can find yourself back into ball games. You can make these freebies. Got that one. Before those two tries, Clarion was only four of ten. Golden Eagles also trying to hold on to the ball as they've turned it over 18 times. They worked the perimeter. Now Galas with a three. That one's too long. Rebound goes to Allen. Looks like she's going to take this one straight inside. That one's smoked away. When she gets her mind on, on attacking to the basket, there's nothing that's going to turn her attention anywhere else. When she's focused on getting there and trying to, trying to score offensively, she, she's going to try to get there. Into the game now for Cal U, it's number four, B.B. George. B.B. George from St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. Six fifty left to go here in the fourth, six to shoot for Cal U. Jasper in the corner, has a one-on-one, -on -one. now she'll take it in time with one second left, throw it up at the buzzer, got it. Great, great way to not settle for the three and get a better shot because you have the taller defender on you. You don't want to shoot a three and get it blocked. So you pump fake, take it in, and make the layup. So here's Whitehead looking for a layup. Another steal or turnover. Depends on how you're looking at it. Now one on one, and Harrington missed that one. Surprised she did not for the pass. Yeah, I was looking for the dump down to BB. There's a roller, but it was kicked. Clarion looking to inbound this one. 6.07 left on that game clock. George on the defensive end. Now off the roll for Whitehead. Back up top. And they fire it inside. They'll go back to Cal U. Yeah, great way running the post there as well. Getting hands in. And the Vulcans just having active hands, keeping their hands up. That's what they 
do best, and that's how they force all these turnovers. Everyone catches up here, and we'll see a full offensive set on the way. Something um, that I haven't noticed until now, just looking down at the bench, talking about Ryman and how she was playing towards the end of that first half on the sideline now and now in her warm-ups. Seen her take a, a nasty fall when she dove into the lane there. Maybe that's why what's holding her out. Yeah, she kind of launched herself through a gap there. I was really surprised she went for it. I think we're going to see her, though, for the rest of the game, just like Noah said. 61-34 to 34 the score. Actually, tack two more on for Clary. Makes it 61-36. to 36. Turnover numbers continue to climb for Clary. Up to 22. Now here's George with it. George over to the far side. Wants it coming for Clary at the next stoppage with 4.53 left to go in this one. Jasper on the run, rattles it home. Bianca Jasper. It's a great take, taking it in the middle, putting it up right in the paint, easy bucket. Jasper on triple-double watch here for the rest of this one. She has seven assists, seven rebounds, has 13 points, so just needs a couple more rebounds and a few more assists. There's a long shot for Clary, but it's White a whitehead. She's been hitting at a pretty, pretty efficient mark, at least recently from behind that three-point line. On the feed for Hudson, looking for another one of his assists. Missed it. Ends up with George. George back out to Allen. And we'll have some more come in after the stoppage of play, and it should bring us to the media timeout, and it will. I haven't talked about the remaining Cal U schedule yet, so we'll go ahead and check that out. We've got a break. No, there's not many games left here. Felt like yesterday we started off and almost done here going into tournament time two left next week yeah in the regular not that many season. games left at all but two very meaningful games after this clarion game got to go um at mercy to mercy Hurst. you got to beat them a team that you lost to earlier in the season and then another team you lost to um in gannon you got you got to be able to beat them if you want to be able to con continue the hot streak going into the playoffs in the psac tournament because i mean that's the team that and, and that, that trap game is something that's Really tough to fall for. They can really catch teams off guard. Play ended up being stopped. Basket is good. Oh, by I'll count it. I thought they were going to stop things up, but they will count the basket for Hedges, and she'll shoot for one more off the foul. Haley Harrington for Cal U. Harrington gets foul number two Haley and third on the, the team with 3:59 left won. to go. Hedge just got the and one. It's two of three from the line so far today, so converting well for herself. Trying to up that rating. Here's Allen on the inside. Kick out to the corner. Maya Woodyard ended up into the game for Bianca Jasper after the break as Cal U misses a shot there. Woodard almost comes up with a steal, rattles around, now she dives for this one. And they'll call the tie up and the arrow reads Cal U, 3.24 left to go. Yeah, still being yeah, aggressive, the Vulcans going here. at it, trying to push the pedal through the floor. Inbound goes over to Woodyard. And she'll rattle her way forward with this one. 3.13 left to go. Cal you well on their way to securing the victory. Off the roll, missed shot. Ends up back with Clary. One set to come in for the Golden Eagles. Next stoppage of play here. Vulcans looking to win two in a row. Take the week. Long pass into the corner. Now another takeaway by Cal U. And Looks the like Vulcans we'll see a couple come in here. Devon for yeah. Cal U, at least two, maybe three. And here's Allen, shot inside, missed it. Just couldn't finish there, but a great move there, putting her defender on the ground. 
2-16 left to go. 63-42 our score. Calu has been in control for quite some time. Here's George on the rotation. Sticks with her mount to be able to step off. That one didn't hit anything. It ends up out of bounds. Take a look. There's Ryman back into the game, though. I didn't think we were going to see her at all, but it's like she shed the gear and found her way back in. Yeah, really surprising that they waited this late to try to bring her back in. I mean, player that has been one of the more efficient, especially with trying to control the ball and play make for other, other players on the team and wait till the last two minutes of the game to bring her back. And we haven't seen her at all in the second half. Kendra McPeak is in for Cal U as well as Ariana Dunson. McPeak off the roll for Dunson. Now outside for Harrington. She'll shoot away with this one. Rattled away. George had it. They'll put a stop to that. Yeah, over the back there, just the reaction from the bench was not happy at all. I wasn't too sure about that one. For Big George. The first for George and fourth on the team with a minute 37 left to go. Feet onto the inside, back out. Long three opportunity, missed it off the front surprisingly. Chasing down her own shot, another one on the way, got it for Clarion. Megan Linden. It's at 63 to 44. Harrington pushing off, looking for room. Goes cross court for Dunson. Now swung back out. Ten to shoot for the Vulcans. Straight up through, got it. A great screen set there by Kendra McPeak, getting involved off ball and, and without the ball in her hands, and able to, to create some some space and opportunity for Maya Woodyard. Play stopped here with 44 seconds left to go. Another foul call. Also number 11, Amaya Woodyard. It'll be a Woodyard foul. The second on her and the or fifth on the team. Hedges will be shooting again. Just that one off the back. Don't forget to stick around with us here on CUTV, CUTV Sports 1 and the Vulcan Sports Radio Network. Men's coverage coming up following the conclusion of this matchup. Men's team starting to put a bit of a run together for themselves. But at least two in a row. Here's McPeak on the inside. Now it's Dunson back out. Woodyard now Dunson in the corner. Shot up, missed everything with it. Vulcan's men's team looking to make it three in a row. Ball ends up with Woodyard. That was very smart and, and, and professional by my Woodyard. Got an easy up-court pass to Kendra McPeat where she could have scored, and but Maya elects to, to pull it out and just dribble the clock out. Really like that. And that will close things out here as Cal U picks up another victory on the season. They improve to 19 and 7, 13 and 7 in the conference. Clarion falls to 4 and 23, 2 and 19 in conference play. No, any final thoughts here? Uh, for the Clarion, just not not hold your heads. We talked about it uh, right when the broadcast started. A whole team, no seniors. You're going to have the same team next year. Um, just continue to build and grow off this. Put in the work in the off season. We'll come back stronger next year. What about you, Devin? Any final thoughts out of this one? Yeah, same thing as that. And the Vulcans just got to keep rolling. You you don't want teams like that aren't supposed to stick around with you stick around with you. And that's exactly what they did. They recognized it. They saw they were letting them stick around for a little bit. And then they totally dismantled it. Tough week coming up for Cal U. Next coverage of Vulcans women's basketball will be Wednesday, February 26th, 5.30 p.m. from the campus of Mercyhurst. Make sure you join us on CUTV Sports 1 and the Vulcan Sports Radio Network for that one. Lakers took the last matchup back on January 25th, 62-55. to They'll be trying to sweep the season series, but for now, Cal U picks up the win today. Men's action coming up after this. Don't go anywhere. Vulcans win it 65-44. to